What's going on guys, it's Andy. Today I'm gonna to be trying to do some PC gaming on the Retroid Pocket 2. Now, of course, this these PC games are not going to be running natively on the Retroid Pocket hardware. I think that's kind of a given, but what we're going to be doing is we're going to be streaming games from my home PC using the Moonlight application that is pre-installed on the Retroid Pocket 2. Now this application, I haven't really tried much on the Retroid Pocket 2, but I have done quite a bit of PC gaming on my Vita using the Moonlight application, um, and I've had really good luck, so I can say it's definitely a good application. I'm eager to see how it works with the Retroid Pocket 2, considering I don't know if it's just my device or just my experience, but I have not been able to connect this to a 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi router. I've only been able to access the 2.4 gigahertz band, so I really don't think that's going to help. Now, I have tried this just very, very briefly, um, and it was... Well, I'll just I'll just let the video do the talking. So we'll just jump into it. We'll go ahead and flip the device on. We're going to open the Moonlight application there. And like I said, it, it should be pre-installed on your device. So it's just gonna connect to my PC. That's my PC. Now the first time you open this application, it is going to search the network automatically. And it found my PC pretty quickly. The one thing that you need to understand is obviously you need to have a PC, but you also have to have a PC that has an NVIDIA graphics card that supports NVIDIA game stream. And you have to enable that setting in the NVIDIA GeForce Experience application on your PC. So now that we've done that, we'll go ahead and jump in. This is just gonna show a handful of games that I have available to play using game stream. So of course I could just launch my Steam, li my, my Steam application and access my entire Steam library there, but we're just going to jump into a, let's try some Far Cry 5, because that's one that I tested, and I don't know, okay, it's loading there, You can see it opens up pretty quickly. Everything's going pretty well so far. The buttons are mapped automatically. Steam is really good about, you know, recognizing the controller you're using and recognizing the input options you have and kind of getting them all set up and mapped correctly. So it's gonna be really, really, really hard to see, but it just says that it's logging in right now. So it's just loading. Okay, here we are on the main screen. So we'll go ahead and click continue. And this is just gonna load a previous save. Okay, so just looking at it right there, something that is worth noting is that because it is such a small screen, it is kind of cramming everything down and it's going to drastically decrease your resolution. And even, even looking at my uh, PC screen right now over to my left, I can see that it is, you know, again, it's the same over there. So the resolution is... Um, downsized quite a bit and my, I have a pretty powerful PC so I know that this is a game that will run at ultra settings the highest graphic settings so that's something to know and that's going to be the same with the Vita or whatever system you're using it is going to kind of you know fit the resolution to the size of the screen that you're using and it looks okay on a very very small screen but that's this is a this has been my experience here if you can kind of see that it's just a lot of skipping kind of a lot of rubber banding, and that's just non-stop. Now looking at my PC screen, again over on my left, if I'm using the controls on the Retroid Pocket 2, it is practically immediate. I don't see any real latency, and I have a pretty fast internet connection, but I really don't notice any latency, any latency looking at my PC screen when I'm pressing the buttons. But looking at the Retroid Pocket 2 screen here, you can see that it is absolutely unplayable. Just absolutely unplayable. So let's go ahead and quit this game. We'll try one more to see how it does. I had uh, tried to get um, CMU working so that I could play Breath of the Wild on my Retroid Pocket 2 just to see how that went. But I'm having issues getting the... Retroid Pocket 2 buttons to map on in the CMU ap application. 
So I don't know what that's about. I may spend a little bit more time with it, but judging by my experience so far with Moonlight and streaming really any game, I don't think it's worth I don't think it's worth spending the time on. <laughs> okay. Apparently there was an update for that, so let's enable the little cursor. We'll click play game. And this is an older game. It doesn't make a huge difference on, you know, when you're streaming the game. It's still going to come down to your internet connection, uh, what type of Wi-Fi you're connected to, um, you know, just a number of different things. So in our case, using... I have a very fast internet connection, but we're using the 2.4 gigahertz band, which is not going to be as good for streaming gameplay. So let's just jump in single player. I'll just pick one at random. And it's also pretty difficult to see the text on such a small screen. So the Vita is, um, I believe it's a five inch screen or a five and a half, somewhere right around there. It's been so long since I've looked at the specs of the Vita, but the Vita for PC streaming on Moonlight specifically is a pretty good experience. You have all the buttons that you'd need. Now, of course, you're lacking L3 and R3 and the triggers, but you can just map those to the back, so it works well. The same can be said for the Retroid Pocket 2. I'll turn this down just a little bit. And you can see we're already seeing that skip, and it's almost rhythm, you know, uh, rhythmic, so it's just about every two seconds it just skips. So I would probably say that just about anything you would try using Moonlight on the Retroid Pocket 2 is going to be about the same experience, especially uh, considering that at least with my device, I'm not able to get, connect to that 5 gigahertz band. So, but the thing that really appealed to me about this is that, like I was saying, you do have triggers, you have all the buttons you'd need. The only thing lacking on the Retroid Pocket 2 is L3 and R3, which you know, I'm, I'm sure would be an issue, but I guess we don't really ever have to worry about it considering I'll never play uh, my PC games on the Retroid Pocket 2. So that has been my experience with PC streaming or PC game streaming on the Retroid Pocket 2. I haven't spent a ton of time, you know, tweaking the settings, but I just don't think we're going to get it much better than that. There's only a couple of things that you can do in Moonlight, and they might not even have it in this application actually. Okay, yeah, so this is what I'm looking for. So settings, and there's, yeah, you can change like the resolution, the frame rate, the bit rate does a, does a bit of difference. But again, I, I just don't think that we are going to see a, a big enough improvement to make this playable. So anyways, I hope that if that was something that you were kind of buying the Retroid Pocket 2, I don't know you know, who would be buying the Retroid Pocket 2 just to stream their games or so many other options, but based on my experience, I don't think that it's a viable solution to do that. Um, maybe if you have a Retroid Pocket and you have a PC that's capable of doing this, you might go ahead and just try to see if your experience is different than mine, but that is just my testing, and my opinion is that it's just not worth doing. So hopefully this helped answer some questions for you guys. I hope that you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. I'd be happy to get in touch with everybody that I can. If you want to support what I'm doing, click the subscribe button and uh, like this video if you enjoyed it. Appreciate it. Have a good one.